Hello and welcome back to another video. Two videos in two days. I don't know what I've lost come over me, but here we are. We're doing a deck review today. Yesterday was the Alakazami Xbox. Uh, if you haven't watched that, check it out. There wasn't any, uh, it's a pretty good box overall, so definitely check it out. I don't know how I managed to fumble the thumbnail though. I took the photo on my phone because I do everything on my phone because I don't have a camera set up or anything. And it just just upside down for some reason. And I was just like, oh, well, I'm just going to keep it as it is. But today's deck review, we're going over um, something we've kind of covered before on paper uh, with Single Strike Lugia. But this is going to be the colorless version. The colorless version is becoming more popular than the Single Strike version at the minute in the meta. With cards like Charizard being hard to knock out with single strike Pokemon, it's not really a good matchup for that deck. And Guard of War, for example, actually for Guard of War, you probably got a better chance because you've got Dark Type Weakness. But Colorless is becoming more popular. I'm gonna cover it. That's what we do. That's what we're gonna, what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, my deck is a little bit different to other few, few decks that are floating around online. Uh, feel free to copy and change it if you want to. But most of the staples are the same. There's just a few little tech cards in there. Obviously, we need free Lugia V-Star for that summoning star ability. Uh, putting the two normal type Pokemon that don't overall walk from the discard pile onto the bench. Obviously, those Pokemon are going to be Archeops. And we can utilize the 220 attack Tempest Dive, which is good for Moridon and Shin Pao matchups since they are floating around. Then, since those Pokemon and like especially for Moridon, like Raikou, Raichu, and there's like iron hand i think it's like 230 though uh they're all floating around that 200 range which is pretty good because you can just power up with four energies and then you're done with that four lugia v uh just to get the powered up on the v star as i mentioned you will need four archaeops for its primal turbo ability allowing you to accelerate two special energy cards from your deck to your pokemon anywhere you like Really good ability, really overpowered. If you're catching a deck like Guard of War, for example, that's going really slow. Guard of War tends to be a very slow deck. I don't like playing against Guard of War because it's like it's like playing against Lost Box. You take they're gonna take a while to do their their things and their techniques and everything. So if you can catch them lacking, you're gonna have a good example. You're gonna have a good time. Two Snorlax unfazed fat prevents Sableye from putting damage counters on it and that Thumping Snor for 180 and there is an energy in here which will ignore the sleep ability, well sleep effect. So what you do is you just constantly swing for 180 which is very good especially for Charizard matchups. If you're doing a prize trade off they're taking one, you're taking two. Very good for building up damage on just anything and you can knock out um lumini on v and mu ex because they are on that 180 range or even lower so it's just a great prize trade-off we have a weird air v my personal favorite in this deck having that frontier road ability allowing you for when you switch it from the bench to the active to move any amount of energy from any of your pokemon to this pokemon very good late game finisher for decks like Gardevoir. I keep mentioning it, but Gardevoir and Charizard, they have 330 HP, 310 HP. Very hard to knock out in one go. When you're down to just two prize cards and you have energy built up on the bench, you're going to have no, none in deck. You prime Archeops Primal Turbo onto that. You can use like Jet Energy or just manually retreat, push it up, move all the energies up onto it and you're hitting like for 400 500 damage it's really easy uh a little bit of a hot take is my two mu ax copies uh mu ax having an amazing attack being able to just copy an active pokemon's attack your opponent's one very good for when they'll just put something crap like rain greninja in the active when they want to stall had this example against god of war they put rain greninja up pass with two rolls on bench mu ax come down couple energies double turbo something else like that and sniping those rolls off the bench no mana fee was in play so definitely taking advantage of that bit of a kind of weird with two copies i am debating on taking out for maybe another snorlax or just another bit of energy but i'm gonna keep it as it is for now drapey on v use for mu matchups mu v max but not very mu v max in my local area at least isn't seeing much play at all but very good for Gardevoir with that tight weakness, doing the double, and it's just all colorless, so you can just 
build it up really easily. But yeah, in my local area, new VMAX is not popular at all anymore. Don't know why. It's a very good deck, but I don't think there's anyone that actually plays it. We definitely need a Dunsparce in there from Fusion Strike with Moraidon running around being as popular as it is, Lugia being weak to Lightning, as well as Archeops. Archeops wouldn't matter as much, but Lugia especially. Gonna have weakness. It's going to be killed very, very quickly, and you will need a Dunsparce to stop that effect from coming down so that you can live a few other turns so that you just don't get donked. Dunsparce has definitely saved me. It saved me in a Turbo Lost Box matchup where Raikou V came down straight away, knocked out my Lugia. Scoop Game 2, have that down straight away, stops it. Luminion V is a one off. Normally, Lugia decks play two. I, don't, I think one's all you need. Searching out that ever so important supporter like Professor Brunette or Research. One Pumpkin Bill. Uh, pumpkin Pit allowing you to discard a stadium. Basically, uh, get rid of a path just in case a deck runs path. Four supporters and trainers, two nest ball, bit of a small amount, but anything needed to get out those Lugia or the um, Snorlax, which was only basic. Four Ultra Ball, as always, we need it to discard Archeops in order to get Lugia V started and Summoning start the next turn. Very simple. This is a very simple deck. Uh, one thing I will say, you do have to be aware of your energy counts on what energy you use on what Pokemon. And just because the wrong sequencing can um, make you lose your matchups. We have four catching aroma. I do like a coin flip, coin flipping for either an evolution, so that's Archeops with your V Star, or basic, which is any of these any of these people down here. One copy of Lost Vacuum to try and get rid of path, maybe something useful like four seal stone on your opponent's side of the field, just having that bit of annoying delay on what they can do is very helpful. We do run free research, being able to discard your hand, so hopefully you have like two Archeops in hand per se, you discard it, draw seven more, you want the Luga V-Star, so that you can just keep that consistency train rolling. Another kind of tough take I do have is four bosses orders. Four bosses is a very heavy count, but when running Mew EX, having that four boss is very helpful, because then you can just boss up something like Greninja, for example, there's a low tier, there's a low HP deck like Lost Box. Use Mew, do no hacking for Moonlight Shuriken, and take those weak, easy prize cards off the field. We do have free Iono for a bit of disruption, as well as just getting rid of your hand if it's just dead, if it's a dead hand. One Professor Brunette discarding two cards on the deck, that is going to be Archeops, and that just, just discards them easily and simply. One Mesagoza, trying to find something from the deck if you flip heads, if you're good enough to flip heads. <laughs> Uh, as a one-off, it can be a bit inconsistent not finding it, but, I mean, it's pretty useful either way. Collapse Stadium, pretty helpful, having only four bench when you have five on, say you have Luminion V, you can just collapse, get rid of the Luminion V, and that then denies your opponent the two prize cards that they will want and need. Moving on to energies now, there's a load of energies in this deck. We have four double turbo energy, accelerating two energy to your Pokemon, but you're doing minus 20. We have the Therapeutic Energy, which is used on Snorlax, and probably Snorlax only, if you can. Basically, what it does, it, it recovers the Pokemon from being asleep, confused, or paralyzed. For Snorlax, it is going to be asleep, because when you use the Thumping Snor Snorlax falls asleep. With the Therapeutic Energy on that Snorlax, it then stops it from falling asleep. So you can keep hitting that 180 every single turn, which is very, very good. Free Jet Energy, very good for switching like Weird Air V up, but um, other than that... Just switching up a Pokemon movie you want to stall with or anything like that, but just a good one for that. For your V matchups, V Guard Energy doing negative 30, very helpful. Can definitely save you from Dirtina, for example, uh, with its lost impact doing 280 on that's on Lugia V Star and it has the V Guard Energy on it. You are saving it on 3 HP. Last cards are Gift Energy, very good for when your Pokemon gets knocked out from damage. Damage only, not damage counters, like Sableye, for example. You can draw two have seven in your hand. So if you have one card in your hand, and say Snorlax gets knocked out with that one, you're drawing six more cards after it gets knocked out. Very easy, just quite rushed, just ten minutes long, this video, but trying to get back on that consistency sort of train like I did when I uploaded shorts like every day for like two months or whatever it was, like something like that. But yeah, here's the deck. 
be sure to screenshot if you want to copy it. Um, I won't have the date list in the description because I can't really be bothered to write it all out, but it's here if you want to take a screenshot. Uh, I do like this deck. I If you scroll on my channel, I did play Single Strike Lugia for a while. I was really good with that. So kind of coming back to Lugia, but with a different variation, it's kind of refreshing, kind of new, which is very good, especially now in the TCG with... Um, Paradox Rift releasing tomorrow. I'm going to, as I said last video yesterday, I'm going to buy a box. Uh, hopefully going to open it on the channel. If not, I'll be able to just highlight the pause in that short or something. So yeah, thank you all for watching and have a great rest of your day.